guys and welcome to the MMOs.com podcast. This is episode 20 and this is Altai joined by Omer, Gumble, Shirelia. All right. And it looks like Erhan's voice is uh, is a little bit dead. Erhan, where have you been? Give us a Oh man, I've Give us an update. I've been living it up in the city. So in I went the to city. ESL. As many cities. <laughs> the city, guys, New York City, all right? The Big Apple. I was at ESL uh, for Dota 2 tournament. And that was, that was this weekend, so it was a lot shorter than TI, it was a two-day event, uh, so it was pretty cool. Uh, EG lost, which they wanted TI, so big upset. I saw I saw that final match, it was Secret versus uh, Vega Squad or something? Vega, Vega? Squadron, like, this, like, I, I've never heard Russians. of them. <laughs> they were Russians, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, Russians, they won. Yeah, they, they, they ended up winning. I only saw the final match, but uh, apparently Eternal Envy dropped the bomb. Dropped yeah, the Eternal Envy. Yeah, that guy's cursed. Every He's team he cursed. goes on. <laughs> Uh, Shu, what about you? We missed we missed you. I'm not, uh, Sean, what about you? We missed you for a Sunday fun day. I was in uh, I was in Georgia, so I'm from Jersey, so it was quite the drive. Wow, that's so a, a lot of crazy so a lot drive. of crosses, a lot of crosses everywhere. How long how long is that drive? Um, well, since it was raining all weekend, it was about 16 hours. Holy crap, dude! Dude, yeah, that's straight. Rough. What? Was it straight or? Yeah, we did it straight, and then I came oh, back. Shoot. It was about 14 hours. Did you drive the whole time, or did you take turns? No, we took turns. All right, so all right. it, it was all right. You know what you see at every rest stop? Hmm. Subway. <laughs> <laughs> Ate a lot of Subway. <laughs> so, uh, Five dollar foot longs? I heard, I heard there's an app uh, called Uber. You know, you can just drive 14 hours with it. I'm sure it'll be like 20 bucks, right? Yeah, is that how it works? Is that, is that what Uber does? It costs 20 <laughs> Actually, bucks? I, I got a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now it's free. All right, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, good deal. All right, all right. Now, transitioning to some actual uh, what's been happening this week. A bit of news that I forgot to mention in my weekly news video, and it, and it refers to Ragnarok Online. And as we all know, all roads lead to Ragnarok Online. Oh, oh baby, what do we got? All right, this, this is a big one. I want, you, I want you to zoom in on that porn, okay? I want you to click on that link and then zoom in on this bad boy. Oh, oh my is this God. the egg ring? This is the egg ring. Oh so egg is not the first thing I thought of, but uh, maybe I'm, something's wrong with me. What? Was no. that, are, you, are you like a <laughs> like nipple? No. I don't. I don't want to talk about. It. All right, let's let's just keep it that way. But I, I like how Shu framed this uh, this bit of news. I mean, seriously, look at this egg pouring, and why did it take over ten years for it to exist? Oh Good question. Yeah. Yo, we need to make a editorial with all the different pourings in Ragnarok. That's a good idea. Uh, like the little gifs and then a description. You know, that when it comes like to pourings. All right, I've it's funny because we talk about the pouring, but we mm -hmm. haven't actually talked about the actual news for Ragnarok. <laughs> the pouring is the news. Right? <laughs> the pouring is the news. See, right? see, that is exactly my point of how the egg pouring should have been the actual news. That really should be. I mean, who cares if that kitty race? I'm surprised. Like, should you know if the race actually does anything or is it just an appearance kind? I didn't even mention it. I think it's just oh. a, a appearance thing. Yeah, there's a there's a new race in Ragnarok called the Doron, and they're kitty people. So that's the yeah, well, second race yeah. now, right? That's it? There's only two? Yes, yeah, only oh, two. Damn. And they, they come with like a whole new starting zone. So like if you want to play again as like a kitty person, you know, if, if you wanted to, you know, drop your level whatever the hell character that's been mm. ascended like three times, <laughs> you know, you can, you can go back to being kitty level one and you get a whole new starting zone, whole new monsters, and that's where the, the egg ring is going to be. All right, now more importantly, we need to see the egg ring being added to this picture that I just linked, all right? <laughs> 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 this is going on Tumblr. As it oh my! Well, we now we need the egg ring over there, right? Gonna put it, like right on her face. She, she doesn't right. need any more pouring. She already has two on her chest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. And, but that's what, what's happening with Ragnarok Online. It's the first class in the game since 2002, which is nuts. I mean, so what are they calling the first one? Just human, or or to give it a stupid name? I, I think they're sticking with like a. Uh, this is what Terran. Right? Terran. Terran. Like, yeah, yeah. Some, you know how some MMORPGs <laughs> make like the human like some weird name like the like the Gazazians or yeah, yeah, that's like true. a diversified race that can you know like come on. That's just true. Humans. A lot of games do that. Yeah. Seems kind I of appreciate cool. that. They're building their own lore, you know. Oh wow. Why would they call them humans? Just call them humans, all right. Maybe. <laughs> humans they have a little tail. Humans. They have a little tail above their butt crack. All right. If they change it up a little, they can change the name. That's my yeah. that's my rule. That's fair. You know, you know, on a on a side note though, Ragnarok Online has the best hentai. All right, well, that's, oh. that's, that, that's, for, that's for the after hours party. <laughs> that's that. Joe. That's for the after party, all right. <laughs> all right, this is we only go to Etchy in the podcast. That's for that, that's for the that's for the, the late night crowd, all right. The, the hentai podcast. The MMOs.com 
late night. Yeah, okay. It's a secret link on the website. You gotta, you gotta really look. You have to find it. <laughs> Hentai.mmos.com. It's happening, all right? <laughs> Keep an eye out for it. And uh, on, on the topic of Etchy, we have a nice video from uh, Tara, actually, which I, I didn't present in the weekly news video either, but uh, why, don't you, why don't you take a look at that for us? I will do just that. All right. So I've actually already seen it, and I think you're the one that hasn't seen it yet, so I'd love to see your reaction to this. It's pretty short. Yeah. Ooh, mama. This is an interesting Ooh. video. Listen with the music, too. Why not? Yeah, I figured the music would be important for this, so I... Oh, baby. Oh, who's that in the distance? Is that me? <laughs> oh. That is... Oh, baby. Look how big his watch is. Is his name Vladimir? <laughs> oh, they're steamy. <laughs> I like his dance. What is that giant doing in the back? <laughs> it's a magic uh... bike dance. <laughs> this is... like oh my god, what is... Oh, he just killed the monster box. with his looks. I get it. <laughs> oh, baby. The Yo, this is pretty cool. Is the, uh, so this is, this is, this is, uh, fan this service is for the girls, right? Of course. Basically. That's pretty cool. That's a good idea. They gotta get some love. Yeah. I mean, we, we see some boob jiggles in the video, too, alright? You know what I like about Terra? I think, and one of the reasons it's doing so well in America, or uh, the West in general, for a Korean game, is because they do stuff like this. Like, it doesn't take much effort, I guess, to make this, but a lot of games kind of just, they publish, and that's it. You know, they don't have any, like, they don't make these kind of trailers. Is they don't play the social game, pretty much. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that's, a, that's, a good, that's a better way to well, put it. Other games take themselves too seriously. Terra is about having maybe, fun. Maybe that's it. On that note, shoot, weren't you talking about like how Final Fantasy fourteen did like a really smart thing by adding that golden saucer to the game because it like makes the game more social? Yeah, yeah, they, they did that. I think from a design perspective, I feel like that's really important. I mean, besides the core gameplay, you want something in the game to keep players around and engaged because you don't want to yeah. be just killing stuff all the time, whether it's collecting cards, I guess raising pets, doing some it, side mini games. Yeah, it's like fun. that immersion. Immersion, you know, it's like you're you're in this world. Like, what else do you do besides go around killing shit? You know, mm -hmm. like just being able to like kind of hang out with your friends and do stuff as well. That that I mean, that's that's awesome. And, and more games need to add that. Mm -hmm. I mean, off the top of your head, can you guys think of any games that do that really well? I mean, for me, obviously, my first game, Ultima Online. I mean, because a lot of the game wasn't just killing stuff; it was kind of just hanging around. I mean, you can like, like I remember my brother and I would just like go to town. We we have some tables with us. We just like set up a bar in the middle of town. Like we would put tables on the ground, serve drinks and stuff, and like all outside like the core mechanics of the game. People could just pick up our tables and shit if they wanted to. But we created like a cool like role playing atmosphere over there. So I thought well, that was really cool. Mobby Nogi does that really yeah, well. Yeah, that that's a perfect example. Yeah. yeah, I'd also say Star Wars Galaxies. Um, oh, yeah. There were like whole classes dedicated to like entertainment. And kind oh, of socializing. I remember mm. the dancers. Yeah. So I would, I would, when I was bored in town, like it's, they gave me like a night day cycle, and I didn't want to go out uh, into Tatooine by myself at night, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would stay. Scary in, place. <laughs> I would stay in the cantina, uh, you know, put on my, put on my late night clothing as my female character, and uh, you know, dance for tips. Yeah, you got some pretty hefty tips, I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my brother played uh, a, Wookie, a Wookie, so he he was not as successful in that in that regard. No, <laughs> I would not get nearly as much love dancing on the tables as my brother playing the attractive petite female character. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, would, I, I would I would get to this once in a while. All right, some people appreciate the Wookie dance. All right, I would appreciate the Wookie dance. I'm all about just getting drowned in that hair. Look, I'll keep you I'll keep you warm when we cuddle at night. All right, That's right. <laughs> it's a benefits to the Wookie. Yeah, those, those things are really important as long as they're well executed, you mm -hmm. know, and they're not like super, you don't want to make them like extremely grindy either because people already have the grind, mm. you know, you want to make it like a little bit more, more fun, whimsical. Another I would just love more games to have <laughs> the stronger emphasis on like non-core gameplay. I mean, you want to have like obviously the good core gameplay, but just having other things to do is unbelievably important. I want to stay logged into the game when I'm just not in the mood to grind either because, you know. This guy was just the extra thing. Yeah. Another uh, example I could give you. It's not a. Uh, it's not quite as good, but a lot of the private servers for RO mm -hmm. had their own events, and they were way more on the ball with events and kind of community stuff than like official servers. And the same holds true for Ultima Online. You know, like yeah. every server had kind of their own events and stuff, like mini events every week. Uh huh. I mean, also, like, the, the big example for that would be World of Warcraft as well. I mean, I don't know, how, you know if you guys came back to it, like, recently, but, I mean, there's the pet battling and stuff. You can, you can, there's so many pets to capture in the game, and then just grind them all to max level, collecting all those rare mounts. Because I remember uh, 
there was one mountain there's one like flying mountain in the game called ashes and you can only get ashes it literally had like a two percent drop rate right and you can only clear the dungeon that he's in once a week you're limited artificially by entering once a week so you'd have to go for like on average it would take you like about a year to get that was like that the map. Halloween event from years ago the Scarlet Blade dungeon <laughs> headless horseman mount yeah, I mean, that? there's lots of crazy stuff like that too. This this was just one example of like a it, persistently in the game. It is very difficult to get, and because you can't trade it, the only way to get it is keep playing. And just so th- you would always have a routine. Like every week, you'd get on WoW, you'd try getting these mounts, you'd run through these dungeons, and like just that low drop rate just kept you in the game. It wasn't just that; it was the it was the, it was the pets. It was just everything in the game that I think beyond the core gameplay is what made WoW really really successful. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and Guild Wars kind of has that too. With not maybe not with the pet stuff, but with like with those achievements on each map. Mm-hmm. So you really don't want to leave a zone until you basically explore the whole area. And, and that's one reason I think Guild Wars is going to do exceptionally well, and it's, it's already doing pretty well. Yeah, it's already a success, I'd say. Yeah, just just it feels rewarding to just clear the map 100. All right, and there's <laughs> and the more Love maps they stuff. add, the more it's going to keep you coming back to do that. On that note, did you guys get any further? Um, I, I'm like in my 20 levels, 20 something now. I, I have played, some catching up to do. I played a, a bit. A rebuild warrior. Oh, why? You didn't like your character? Um, mage was the one I, I, mage? I just wanted to, I don't know, I played mage in Final Fantasy. I, I got bored. I was like, I already did this. And I, I'm actually having a lot more fun playing the warrior anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I figured I, I would catch up to you guys mm-hmm. fairly quick. Uh, sure, you might want to join us for that, too. It's a pretty fun yeah, game. Yeah, uh, sure. Do you guys have any illusionist? That's kind of what I want to play. Go ahead. Uh, have you played Guild Wars 2 before or no? I, I have, yeah. I oh. played, I was, what was I, I was a, the, the Alchemist class or whatever, it had like a... The Alchemist? <laughs> I don't think it was an Alchemist, it was like... Element, there's, no, no, there's the uh, Mesmer, or not Mesmer, what's it called? Engin- is it Engineer? Elementalist. I, I, Elementalist, I don't, so I don't know why I'm thinking that. Yeah, I think there's, some, it, there's something that looks like an Engineer too, you're right. It was like an Engineer, it like, had like a backpack and like some kind that's of... That's the Engineer, it's called yeah. the Engineer. Oh, that's cool. That's the one I played. Well, uh, definitely make a character and join us for that. We'll make another uh, another Sunday Funny video later. Also for Rust, we got to do because I had a lot of fun in Rust too, and it just it's a fun game to do a video for. Just like crazy shit happens in Rust, like in no <laughs> no other game it's gonna happen. in, so I think we should set up a Rust, like get a little further ahead mm-hmm. on uh, Rustified, and uh, we'll start recording start from the there, video yeah. there. This mm-hmm. is the attack helicopter in the game now, which looks pretty pretty neat. Oh, so man. yeah, we got to get in there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another topic I wanted to discuss this week, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, it was an article that Matt actually wrote on MOS.com about permadeath in MMORPGs. How do you guys feel about permadeath? Ooh, okay. In MMORPGs? Or yeah. M- okay. Uh, well, first MMORPGs, then we can talk about MMOs later. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm br- so the only MMORPG that I know that has that is uh, the Realm of the Mad God. Yes, but it's a browser-based game. Pretty casual, but it's pretty fun. It... It's a browser base, but it's also on Steam now, isn't it? Yeah. But again, yeah, it's still it's kind of simple. Um, but I mean, I can't really think of another one that has it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's game th- Face of Mankind was a game that had it. Oh, oh, did it? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Did, is it that still a- around? No, it's shutting down. Yeah, I heard it was shutting down. Yeah, but it had it. All right, that's fair. Uh, yeah. I, to 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 get to your point, I think it's a good idea. More, I think more games should uh, tinker with it, or perhaps make a race. That's overwhelmingly more powerful, or a class, mm-hmm. and then in their lore, it, something could be like, "This is the one race that's not immortal, right?" So like, yeah. um, it would kind of make it m- kind of be like a hard mode, but w- with the benefit of like more strength early on. Sure. I, I, like, I feel uh, I feel like for permadeath, you need to have a system where see see the issue with an MMO is like it's very progression based, right? Yeah. Yes. And you don't want to have a game that's has permadeath that like you can just lose everything when the end progression is like too far from the start. Yes, Does it make but, sense? But, but yeah, but you can design the game. I think so. Like yeah, it, it needs to be designed around that knowledge. Around that mechanic. Can- yes. Like you can't just like take World of Warcraft for example. Just oh no, slap permadeath. That would be like, no, that would be a that disaster. Would be horrible, right? Yeah. It, yeah. So it's it's you need to have a um th- the progression from level one to max not be not take too long. You just take like a. It needs to be like Rust levels. Like people need to look at Rust, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about that when they make their permadeath MMO. Sean, I think I like more of a a mix 
where there's some aspects of the game are permadeath and then other aspects are persistent, like Ultima Online or EVE Online, where you per- the, you, the permadeath is in regards to, say, you lose all your gear, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I don't know if, how I feel about actually losing everything you've done because it is such an investment. Uh, I think Diablo 3 does it well where they have the option with the hardcore servers and Diablo's always, or at least Diablo, Diablo 2 and had Diablo that 3 well, had yeah. that. Um, and I think that works, but as a, as a main gameplay mechanic for everybody, I, I don't know how I, how I feel about that. I don't think I like that. But if you make certain aspects that you lose, or maybe when you die you lose a certain part of your skills, you know, maybe you get a little rollback. That way then there's still a drawback to dying, and it makes you second guess whether or not you should enter that PvP arena or engage that monster or whatever. But... Um, not lose everything. Not to start over. Because, I mean, these days, I would just be like, ah, I'm done. <laughs> and I would walk away. Or uh, uninstall. There is another game that has it, which I, it's a game I doubt you guys have heard of. Maybe Aaron has heard of it, but uh, a game called Shea. I have heard it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that now. And uh, it kind of it kind of fits uh, kind of what we've been saying, where uh, it's optional. Uh, and it just rewards you more if you choose to uh, partake. In, in, in Shea's case, you get more skill points per level. Mm-hmm. Than uh, than you would otherwise. With Here's the, the funny thing about Shea, yeah. though, I want to I want to sneak this in there. Uh, the way it works in Shea is if you're a hardcore character, if you die, you have to be res within three minutes. Your character's permanently dead, right? Yeah. I mean, it falls under the permadeath mechanic. However, if you're willing to spend cash up money, you just, you can res yourself. Huh. That's not good. Okay. Otherwise, the priest has to res you. But it's like imagine you have a hardcore character, you sunk so much time for this guy, and then you die, right? You're gonna spend that money. They got you by the balls at that point, you know? They do. That's a problem with, like, with a lot of free-to-play mentality is that that's how they end up monetizing the game, which is more about the entire free-to-play genre, about you know, the pay-to-win elements. But that's, that's pretty shameful, I think. I mean, if you want to have a cool mechanic like permadeath, don't, don't cheapen the experience or rather make it more expensive by having, you know, being able to buy your way out of it. I, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. That's like if I get sick, but I have lots and lots of money. <laughs> you were better. Yeah. I'm Magic Johnson. Did you guys see the episode of South Park? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cure to, the cure to AIDS. <laughs> yeah. It's just injecting money right into your blood. blood, blood. <laughs> uh, I have not seen that episode. I will definitely check it out. That's an excellent, <laughs> excellent episode. But uh, what about a game that you can like? Because I, I want to see that mechanic used more. I, we had a little discussion in this comments on this uh, on this article with a few of the p- viewers on here. I, I would like to see this mechanic be used more. I feel like. A lot of games are just kind of going with a generic flow and really not trying to innovate so much. Mm-hmm. So just imagine a game where um, perhaps, like, you can just imagine this levels, basically. A game with permadeath, a more of permadeath, where you can just keep leveling up, but as you, like, a level 60 is only marginally stronger than, like, a level 3, let's say. So as you keep leveling, and you can take as, as much time as you want into a character, but as long as, like, the high, like, level 60 character can be killed by two, like, like three level 1s, I think it still evens out then. Obviously, the level 60 is stronger, and it might even take a long time to get there, but if the, skill, but if the actual gap between like, effectiveness and combat is marginal, I feel like you can, have a lot of fun with, like, you can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, but that's more of like a, a, that's a major gameplay change, not really permadeath oh, related. Well, it can still be permadeath. When you die, you can back oh. level 1. Like, your character's gone, you know? Okay, okay. That, okay. Way, that way, you still have the incentive to keep sinking time into your character, and you'll always get marginally strong every time. Well... But, Besides, Diablo 3 kind of does that. You you max out at like 60. Yeah. But uh, you keep gaining Paragon levels, which give you marginal stats mm-hmm. and other benefits. Like, you get like Paragon points to make you slightly faster or slightly more damage or something like that. Um, but again, it's very marginal. And somebody with a lower Paragon level, if they have better gear, they can have higher DPS still. All right, but, but for the record, I don't, know if I, I, I don't know if I consider Diablo 3 an MRPG anymore with all the changes they've already had, all right? You okay, can't trade. okay, that's it's fair. There's so yeah, yeah, it's limited not, interaction yeah. between players. It's losing a lot of those, you know, those points on what an MRPG actually is. <laughs> so this is a fun one uh, in this editorial. Um, Trials of Ascension is a game that's trying to do a little thing, probably that's kind of cool way. Uh, everyone, every character has a hundred lives, so it's not one death you're gone. It's one hundred deaths you're gone. That's actually really cool too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why are we seeing more things like this in newer games though? Like I, you'll see a few fringe games experiment with this, but I feel like so many games have already gone like the safe route of just making like, all right, let's make another fancy game. Like a perfect example of like just a generic game, okay? Like a generic Korean game. Please. Asta 2, okay? Or Asta Global now, okay? It's like 
if you played Alice's Story, you know what it is. It's an obscure, just another anime-inspired fantasy RPG with, with really nothing going for it, right? Not to be harsh towards Asta too, but like that's what you are. You are just a generic game with cutesy anime graphics. You're making Asta two cry now. All right, in the corner. That, that's all you are. You know, you got nothing else to offer to the world. <laughs> <laughs> like and this and I, I don't want to single out us. There's literally dozens of games like this. Okay, like if you start browsing our fancy category on MMOs.com, there are a lot of just generic games that just do nothing to innovate. Well, I mean those those, those those games really weren't trying to innovate, right? They're just yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's things out there. I, yeah, there's some original games out there, and I feel like. But I mean, look what happens to original games like Star Wars Galaxies, right? Yeah. That was still pretty early in the whole MMORPG development cycle. What about some newer original games? Like they're really trying to do something different. Are they are they doing well? You think? Like name one. <laughs> yeah. Think. Let me think. All right, we got we got we got Golden Rush, the, the garbage Russian MOBA. But that's that, that doesn't count. That's bad for its own reason. All right, but let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll find something. All right. I mean, is Shroud of the Avatar doing much? That's there. I mean, I haven't played it yet, so I really can't speak. That's the British just new game. I feel like that, that's really building off of you know Ultima a lot. Ultima. Yeah. That's what I said. Right, but even okay, but, but let's like uh, the the big titles in the MMORPG genre mm -hmm. are basically playing it safe. You know whether yes, of course. I mean Guild There's Wars so is fun, right? Invested. But yeah. it's it's a pretty safe MMORPG. You know, there's nothing like they didn't they didn't rock the boat. I agree. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, that's fair. They made some nice things like with the one global ser the one the regional servers that was great. But it's basically mm -hmm. you know you kill wolves, then you, then you kill like coyotes or something, and then you kill like. Rabbit coyotes, and then you know you kind of progress from there. It's not and like blue uh, wolves. <laughs> the, the colors of the wolves change. Okay, that, that's a pretty pretty standard yeah, yeah. trope. I mean, I'm that's... also saying not like don't reinvent the MRPG genre. Like, have some unique mechanics. Like beyond, just like, again, just like, Asta has like really nothing unique going for it. All right, <laughs> have something that stands apart. I mean, at least Guild Wars Two had uh, emphasis on like the whole completionist selling point and the dynamic quest. Right? I mean. It's not it's not a whole lot different, but like you you have those. I think okay, here's a one. R uh, Rift is a yes. MMORPG. It was originally pay to play. It went free to play, and I played it back when it was pay to play, mm -hmm. and it had a really really complicated uh, skill uh, class system. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they what they did eventually was kind of what Star Wars uh, Galaxies did. In that, in terms of, they kind of made, it, they, they simplified their class. It's still, it's still kind of cool. There's like three uh, skill trees, right? Like or talent trees, mm -hmm. and they're really different. And there's a whole bunch of options. But before that, you could actually multi-class. Interesting. Okay, so you could be up to three classes. And it, honestly, it was cool. But it was way too complicated. I just, I just click what, what looked cool, right? And I made a game character in the end. So, <laughs> so they actually simplified it. And in that case, I think it, it served them well. Uh, in terms of in Star Wars Galaxies, they, they kind of ruined it. Uh, they, maybe they have done something like what Rift did, was where I make it simpler, but don't completely throw it out the window. You know, Rift had one of the most interesting healing classes like I've ever seen in an MMORPG. Did you did you play that at all, Arnon? Rift? Yeah, yeah, I played Rift a lot. The the, clo the Chloromancer. Oh, Do I didn't remember the Chloromancer. I, I, no, I was a cleric, but I, I did oh. heal. But yeah, <laughs> the, the, that was like a really really innovative healing class. It was like you you had these seeds that you put on people and uh -huh. then you would cast like a you know like a frost bolt type of thing and it would like heal people oh that's pretty so cool it's, so it's like you were a dps slash healer hybrid it's oh, awesome. awesome yeah um, i mean rift rift was a fun rift, rift is fun it's a it's a solid it's mmorpg all right well, I, mean, well, I was like oh, the few newer games i was thinking of the, at least some unique aspects skyforge for example i mean on the surface it's still just another rpg but the game's multi-classing system where you can literally play every class it just takes forever Mm -hmm. I thought that was a cool mechanic. I mean, oh, yeah, those little things. Yeah. Like, I want to see every game at least have one thing where they can say, look, we're different. This is what we got, all right? Mm -hmm. Guild Wars still but has that. Skyforge has that. I feel like a lot of the su successful games do have that. But doesn't Final Fantasy have the same thing as Skyforge, though, right? Yeah, uh, I, I didn't play Final Fantasy XIV that much, but yeah, it's got the same. Can you, can you, can you max everything out in Final Fantasy XIV? Yes. Okay, yes. that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, they have it, too. But I guess the, 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 distinction, the distinction here is this is free-to-play. So it's bringing... The element from uh, oh, yeah, pay to play yeah. to free to play. Well, I think I think what you're basically pointing at is whether the games are, you know, basically the big budget or not. All right. So, like for example, this game, which was probably just another generic MMORPG, uh, yeah, Dragon's Austin Prophet. Didn't cost that much to make. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Dragon's Prophet. It's shutting down. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a game published by Rune Waker Entertainment. 
Uh, it was developed by Urban Waker, and yes, it was uh, published, by published by Daybreak, which used to be SOE. And uh, I, I'm actually I'm, I'm surprised it took this long, because you know, these guys got bought out, uh, SOE got bought out, and basically, I think these guys are going to shut all their games down, that, that they don't develop themselves. A lot of the older ones they're not bringing yeah. any money. I feel like they're more—they're going to be more tight with the purse strings because they just acquired the company. They got to cut some costs through all that jazz. So I, I, I was actually really surprised when SOE published Dragon's Profit. This game, this game is—they're the same guys that made uh, Runes of Magic. Runes of Magic, yeah. I mean, it's Runes of Magic hasn't shut down yet. But no, no, that one's that one's going strong. I don't know about going strong. Oh, it's, it's going, it's going, it's going. It's not going strong. Right. It's going. I mean, uh, Sean and Shu, have you guys played Runes of Magic? No. It was like it was like when free to play was still kind of young, right? Like, like early days of HUD. Okay, it was like when this game came out, it was like they took World of Warcraft, they copied it, and made Runes of Magic, right? Yeah. And added, yeah. yeah, it looked just like actually it very similar. I was talking about multiclassing earlier. The one cool thing in uh, Runes of Magic was multiclassing. Yeah. If I remember it was done correctly. Really well, I think. Yeah, yeah. In a fun way. Mm-hmm. And just out of uh, some WoW clones, I want to show you. Uh, I want to show what the graphics look like in a second as soon as I find it. But that game, it did really well when it launched. It's died down a lot now, and it's not really much going on with Winter Magic anymore. Just, it's still around and kicking. It just sad to see that their new game shutting down while the the old one's still surviving. But I feel like that's usually the case. The old games really end up paying the bills. It's kind of uh, weird that that, ha that ends up happening with all the games. Yeah, I mean, again. Look at NCSoft. Where's all, all of NCSoft money coming from? Lineage 1, alright? It's pretty crazy. Anyway, take, take a look at this. Uh, you can see a picture of Runes of Magic on here, too. Just like the art style in the game is very similar to uh, World of Warcraft. Oh, wow, As a, it does, yeah. Look, look at the rest of the games on this list. I made, I, I made a list earlier about actual WoW clones. You know, people use the term WoW clone pretty loosely. You know, if a game has like, any elements of WoW, people will say it's a WoW clone. But like these games on this list, they copy like completely the visual aesthetic of WoW. <laughs> Like, I think I've played most of these. Wow, wow clone. Yeah, Four yeah, Story, think... Gates of Andern, yeah, that's a, that's a wow clone. Just look at the art style in all these games. Elods, like, Elods is halfway there. Alright, but like, still, look at the, the art style. Art style in the game is just yeah. straight up wow. Yeah, Elgon wow. is hilarious. That the... was uh, that was Derek Smart's uh, brainchild over there. Yeah, that, it, looks like, <laughs> well, it looks like a warlock from WoW just riding a mount. It's hilarious. Yeah. This Elgonon game, it's, it's pretty terrible. That Derek Smart guy was uh, one of the guys that worked on it. Not so smart with that game, but I'll tell him that. I, <laughs> I, I just feel like the guy who criticized Star Citizen didn't work on Elgonon because that only takes away from his credit. Right? <laughs> My mic was muted. Really? Uh, I, I've been talking to myself. Oh, uh, you love that? Beautiful. Uh, yep. All right, anything you want to chime in? Um, nope. Everything has already been said. <laughs> These little <laughs> WoW clones. Quite the. Quite the titles over here. Aaron and I have actually played all of these games. Yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> Rude Magic we played the most because that was uh, like an actual game. And by four, when Four Story came out, we're like, all right, no, I've had enough of WoW clones. Allods, I remember when we played Allods Online, it was on G Potato originally. Like, when you play a new game at launch, it's, it's an interesting experience. You, you find out all the bugs, all the, like, the weird things about the game. In, Al in Allods Online, there was one quest where, like, every... We're following the treadmill from the beginning, right? It's almost like a rail. You know, you do this quest, you do that quest. It's like mm -hmm. you go in a straight line. One of the quests in the beginning town has you, like, killing this, like, bandit lord or something. And he's in hiding out in one of the houses. He's there by himself. you got to kill him. The problem is there was literally 150 players in that house camping him. <laughs> <laughs> and only one person gets credit for the quest at a time. So oh, everyone, that's rough. So everyone's just like, trying to get first aggro on that guy, right? And when he dies, he doesn't respond instantly. He responds, like, within five minutes. So everyone's just kind of just chilling and talking there while... Camping this bandit lord. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it can be annoying, but I, I like that better. I mean, to that degree, it's bad, but I like that better than an empty world, right? Yeah, at least we still saw people. Yeah. It was it just a funny like, experience. It adds, like, social moments uh, when stuff like that happens. Yeah. I feel yeah. like there needs to be uh, a lot more of that in games. I mean, not not that, sp that specific thing yeah. of, like, having it take forever to respond, but... There needs to be like more social hubs where like people can get together to work together to solve problems. That's why yeah. Guild Wars Two is doing well. Those dynamic quests. I mean, whether you 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 don't plan it, it's just that all right. You know, you you do these dynamic quests, and other people are there. It, obviously, they're really easy. They're not difficult quests, but just no. seeing people in the same area working towards this, the same goal without any coordination by anyone. It's it's a nifty little thing that makes the world feel alive. You know what game did that first? What Rift. All right, yeah, with with, with the rifts, the rift yeah. system. Yeah, I yeah. like that. So, 
Yeah, I guess it's not it's not it's not so unique anyway. But yeah, it's it, it pretty much copied that from Rift, didn't it? Wasn't yeah. Tree of Savior adding that too? Where like you get automatically partied to people that are within the vicinity or something? Oh, that's another thing. The automatic party thing. I don't mm -hmm. think Guild Wars does that, right? You don't really join the party with no, people. You okay, don't. in Rift, you actually join yeah. like a raid. Yep. Just just by, by by being near people that they're doing an event like that. But you don't need to in Guild Wars 2, that's a thing. Yeah, to kind yeah. of circumvent it. You, I mean, even the party system in Rift wasn't really necessary. Yeah, it, it was a gimmick, but it, since people play like WoW and they know what a raid is, mm -hmm. the fact that at level 10, let's say, I was just by walking around doing my stupid quest, like to kill mushrooms or whatever, I'm now mm -hmm. part of a raid trying to fight a dragon, you know, like, and there's 40 health bars in front of my screen. It made me feel really cool, you know? That's true. Yeah, so. That it was, was about that, feeling that was cool. cool. Yeah, that's about feeling cool. So I, feeling cool. <laughs> I didn't get that in Guild Wars, right? I'm just, you know, I'm shooting the crab monster or whatever with like 10 other guys. But, you know, if I got those health bars and DPS charts in front of me, like... It makes you feel cool. Yeah, it makes yeah, you feel yeah, more... Yeah, 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 it, it makes me think I'm high level, you know? It's kind of like using a mechanical keyboard, you know? When you hear that, that clickety-clacky noise, you feel like, damn, I'm an elite hacker over here. Yeah. <laughs> Getting shit done, all right? Let's be real. That's, all, that's the only reason we all have mechanical keyboards, all right? Actually, I like the I like the tactile feedback. Okay. Okay, yeah. you like hearing the noise of like you being a badass when you type. <laughs> I think subconsciously that's what everybody thinks. When they, when it's they type visceral. It. Oh. Yes. That's that's, that's the that's the most podcast word of the of, of the year. Right? Yeah. Visceral. <laughs> Every year we pick a new word. Yes, we'll be sticking with visceral. We got we got to think of a new one for uh, next year. It's it's coming up. We're almost there. And since next year's VR immersive will probably be the next word. Immersive. Yo, I am pumped for VR. I mean, we talked about the. The keynote address and it just it's intense stuff. Looking forward to that VR uh, fine Japanese art, as I like to put it in the YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime people mention like lollies and hentai and anime in the comments, I just mention no, no, this is all fine Japanese art. <laughs> I'm just a connoisseur, right? An art expert, if you say. Uh, moving on, is a funny thing I wanted to share with you guys. I don't think any of you guys saw this yet, so it's actually. Pretty interesting. There's a game called Tiny Mighty. I did a video for it. Did you guys see my video or no? I have not. Didn't see the video, Good. but I know of the game. Good. I'm glad you didn't see it. Because uh, this I game see. is... It, take a look at the website, first of all. All right? Let's this, take a peek. All right, I want you guys to click on that link and go to the hero section, okay, on the homepage, all right? Mm -hmm. So on the first hero, do you see Mind Reader? Oh, no, we're getting there. Where is it? Heroes. Uh, heroes. Okay. Uh, just scroll down below the picture. And then click News and Heroes. Click on Heroes. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, who, does, who does Mind Reader remind you of? Can you guys... Huh. Uh, Oh, huh. is it is it is it Z men, Y men? Do you even have the X on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so this is obviously made in China. Yes, and scroll down, scroll to 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 so you see Hurricane. All right, take a look at Hurricane. Who does she remind you of? Wait, I only see one. I only see. Oh yeah, you can scroll. Oh, oh I switch. Oh, it's I switch, guys. Come on. It looks like a Halle Berry. Right? Hurricane. That that hurricane. It, that can't be Storm, right? That's that's something completely different. That's Bicycle. Hurricane. It's, it's more. It's more I like specific. How everybody's kind of like, uh, like lumpy. Like they got this like <laughs> lumpy like thing going on. Yeah, why is everyone obese in this world? Me. Sword. Electroshock. Dude, look at poison. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep going till you get the poison. Poison's amazing. It's supposed to be venom, but it's, he's not venom, guys. He's poison. No, no. The best one is this genie gray. They didn't even try on this one. They didn't even call her Venus or Sparrow. Yo, no. Mar my favorite is Maroon Witch. Maroon Witch is my favorite. Genie Gray. Maroon Witch. No. I thought this was hilarious. No metal mask. It's not Iron Man. They're all like obese. Dude, the Iron Man one is literally just the Iron Man mask, but yellow instead of red. Yeah. No, no. He's metal mask. Don't like. Obviously, Marvel copied them, right? Oh my God. Grout. Grout. It was just Groot. This this black, guys, guys, oh it's a black God. widow. They have black spider. <laughs> all the female characters are like models wearing thongs. Yo, she's all literally wearing a thong. Like chubby sumo wrestlers. <laughs> Dude, I, rabid, I love it. Rabid raccoon. <laughs> Keep going, we guys. We got more. We got uh, <laughs> the worm. We got we, we got we got Wolfie guys. Dude, this guy's straight up just called saber tooth. Like <laughs> flat out. <laughs> that one was not copyrighted because it's an animal, so they can just use that. Guys, instead Wolfie, of the worm. Wolfie. Wolfie. He's got a cigar. <laughs> Yeah, guys, how long? How long till they've moved the cigar? Because uh, they no. got rid of Gray's cigar. They got rid of the other Starcraft. Oh yeah. Cigar. This is developed in China. They don't care. Yeah. Miss Smoking is popular in China. Miss Marvelous. Oh, oh man, Miss Marvelous oh, is a nice booty. 
Look at Thorn. It's not Thor, guys. It's Thorn. So how was the uh, how was the game no, here? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Keep going until you get laser eyes. He's yeah, yeah. Laser. Some, some, I'm not sure why you're surprised at this point. <laughs> oh my god, these are so good. This is comedy. The hunk. Movie. The hunk. <laughs> <laughs> so these are obviously ripoffs of uh, Marvel heroes. Captain anyway. Mars, dude. It's not. It's not America. It's Mars. Dude, this guy's name is You Gonna Lose. <laughs> I like Gamble. <laughs> you you gonna lose? You gonna lose? <laughs> this is genius. Gamble. <laughs> you gonna lose? Frozen's an enemy. Oh my God! This is this is. So, I like The Rock. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is this is Tiny Mighty Heroes Unite. It's, uh, it's a Chinese browser-based game. Guys, and guess what? Guess, guess what? You'll be blown away. The game plays itself. Like, every one, every one of these Chinese garbage games, it literally plays itself. You don't do anything. Yo, I want to play this. How do I play this? Start the, game. Did you guys see the rock? Start game. <laughs> I'm going to log yeah. in through Facebook, and get my account's going to get hacked. I did a first <laughs> video for this game already, and it's just very, very monotonous. Literally nothing happens. Oh like, like Naruto guys. or... <laughs> yeah. It's very similar to all those games. Basically, as soon as you start your mission, which is all, you know, you walk around this persistent area, and it's very small, and you start your mission, and your character basically just fights automatically. <laughs> Dude, oh man. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Mag <laughs> guys, guys, Magneto is a uh, Magnet Man. <laughs> Magnet Man! <laughs> Alright, that's, that, that, that's our, you know, guys, 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 there's a new official thing every week in the podcast, alright? Shitty Chains Game of the Week. Ooh, right, I like it. Perfectly fine with that. This is a good one because there's lots of these games, and I, I can already name like a dozen, all right? But we're going to stick with yep. this one for this week. And you look forward to the shitty Chinese game of the week every week on the Moz.com mm -hmm. podcast. Hey, what's the issue with the Spider Man one? Yo, I, I, already, I already finished a quest in this game, guys. Yo, you're really good. <laughs> oh, now I'm playing a slot machine because, you know, that's what superheroes what, do. What is this? Yeah. Like, why? Why is Spider Man like. Take a look at Spider Man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like what went wrong? <laughs> He's asked by his arachnid. Yeah, he he like, I don't know, he just like rolled around some play-doh or something, and this is what he ended up looking like. He's like pink. This is barely a game at this point. I'm just clicking what the this orange arrow is telling me to click. And w once you get oh don't worry when the gameplay begins, there's no clicking involved. You know your character auto does the combat. It's like click and, simulator. And the game is like the audacity to give you like a one to three star rating, even though like if you if you take your mouse your hands off the keyboard and mouse, you're guaranteed a three star. So I'm curious, how do you not get a three star? Like, can you even get a two star or a one star? That's a real challenge because you get a three star by doing nothing. So, how do you what get the one star? What you're saying is that it's only downhill from actually playing. So you can actually play. It's only downhill from there. The, the, the peak of this game is the awesome uh, like parody gold with the with the character names. That's like that's the biggest selling point of Tiny Mighty over here. I have to I have to respect their audacity. All right, I I give them props for right? that. That's true. They, they, they give no Fs about copyright yeah. law. Absolutely not. <laughs> Alright, I'm done with this game. Alright, close it out. That, that, that was Tiny Mighty Heroes United, in case you want to check it that out. Was right? fun. I, I doubt you do, but it's out there. Well, right. moving on in some other uh, MMO news. What do we got? This What, what well, else do we have? I, I got one. I got one. So, what is Block and Load goes free to play? This is a game by Jagex. They publish it. Uh, they, they're obviously famously known for uh, RuneScape. Yeah, uh, Shu and I played this last night, actually, and I was talking really? a lot about it, because I, when I did my video, I, did, I talked a lot about the, the transition to free-to-play and how I think it's really good for the game. It's actually a really cool game. Sean and Aaron, have you guys played this yet or not? I haven't yeah, even I playing it today. I haven't heard right. of this. Cool. Uh, maybe we could do a Sunday Funday video for this, because it's a 5v5 game. So I'm really just explaining it there, hon. Yeah. It's a 5v5 game where uh, it's almost a MOBA in a way, because there's a lot of teamwork involved, but it's, uh, it's a shooting game. So think Team Fortress 2, where you have like multiple heroes, each with their own like specialties, right? Okay. Meets Minecraft. Oh. It sounds stupid and it sounds weird, but it works, okay? And really, if you play for like 20 minutes, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But you spend first five minutes building your defenses in your base. You start building up blocks, you, you defend your base, and then you attack the enemy base. If you, whoever kills the enemy base first wins. The base cannot be healed, so you just, a few people are on defense, a few people are on attack mode. That sounds really, really cool. cool. It, it just, it, it's such a unique idea. And when I was talking about permadeath earlier, about like games that have unique aspects, outside of MMORPGs, like Block and Load is a perfect example of a game that actually does something different. And I think it's going to do really well. Oh, yeah. The problem with it so far is that we can't Sunday fund it yet. Squads can only be up to two people. Uh, it's no, a bit uh, odd. No, no, you can play custom games with more. It's just you can't play oh, yeah. rank. Yeah, you can't do like traditional matchmaking rank with more people. My issue with the game is that it was incredibly complicated, but I'm sure after you invest tons of time into sure, it before, sure. Have, have you played, uh, if you want to talk complicated, you gotta play League of Legends, no, Worm Dota. Online. No, until you play Worm <laughs> Online, you don't know what complicated oh, it is. Oh, Worm right? Online? You gotta yeah. play Worm Online. Shana, how, how'd you describe that uh, game, do you remember? 
I mean, Worm Online was as complicated as uh, what was the other one I played, uh, the Charlemagne of. of oh, a survival brain. game. That survival game. Mortal. Mortal. Worm. Mortal Worm was Online? the game that you you had an excellent quote for. Worm was more complex than Mortal. Mortal Online is just, you like to grind. All right. <laughs> Get in more long. Have at it. Have at it. Go, go no, but for it. I, I give it a shoot. The way this game looks, it looks casual friendly. So if it's complicated, it, it, they got to they gotta tone down. They can't make it too complicated. Well, hold on, before I'll, have to try, I'll have to try it. I'll have to try it. But yeah. listen, you have, you have like, I think, nine heroes in the game and nine more, obviously. They each have like, what, like six different things. They're not really abilities. It's what you can do with them. Like, everyone's got their own unique kind of block they can put down. It's, yeah, I mean, the guns and skills probably don't, don't aren't the part that makes me uh, worried. It's it's like the whole building and stuff. Yeah, you there's some like knowledge required, and, like we're optimal place for things. But the whole selling point of block and load is every game is supposed to be different. All right, all right. I look forward to trying this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to give the mega props to doing something unique out there. And also, this I think this is, this this will be an interesting case study for um, free to play outside of MMORPGs that they can like do really well. I mean, I think it's gonna do well. We don't know yet. Obviously, it's way too early to call. I went free to play October first. I wrote a short uh, column on it saying. Block and load, another free to play success in the making. Based on my minimal experience of the game, I think it'll do really well. Prior to going free to play, it was getting about. It, went for, it launched in April of 2015, so it was really not that, you know, it's been out for a short while. It averaged about 200 to 400 people a day on Steam, right? Mm -hmm. And since going free to play October 1st, it's been getting an average of over 2,000. And it's still too early, but it peaked at 8,400 on Sunday. Wow. I mean, to go from 200 people average, like 300 people average, to 8,000. Hmm. That's impressive, and uh, it might not maintain the full eight thousand going forward, but I think it's going to be a a big, like, increase in active users since going free to play. All right, that's fair. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, there's a there's a free to play trailer for it as well. Uh, you can look at it later, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's a game I, I, I watched the trailer for the yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's 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 an interesting game, and uh, I want to see more companies take risks on making their games because let's face, it, I don't want to play another. Tactical shooter. I don't want to play another combat arms, right? There's already so many combat arms games out there mm -hmm. that I don't. I, I don't play. Whether you call it Soldier Front Two, whether you call it Operation Blackout, Project Blackout. I mean, uh, Black Shot. These are all the same game. Like it's unbelievable how identical these games are. Mm -hmm. At least combat arms was one of the first, you know, tactical shooters. But since then, it's just. It's really a shame how many games just literally control C, control V each other, hmm. especially in the shooting genre. So, First Assault, another game. That actually finished its beta test, uh, first round of beta testing earlier this week. That game looks interesting because it's got the sci fi elements. At least, like, I see the trailers. The trailers look kind of cool. I'm curious to see if it's going to play out like a generic shooter or something else. My bet I'm, is shooter. Just a generic shooter, you I think? Too. Has okay. anyone played it? Nope. No. I, I have beta access, but they said it, there's an NDA, so I can't record Ooh. videos. The oh, so anyway. there's no point. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be like, all right, I might as well wait till I do my first look video and I'll play it properly. But video looked cool. I mean, it's trying to. Use the Ghost in the Shell franchise. I'm sure there's a lot of fun assets they can use over there, but I don't get the NDA thing for beta. It doesn't make sense to me because it's like you're losing out on so much um, publicity. Publicity, yeah. Yeah, I mean, plus if you play the NDA anyway and you think the game sucks, guess what? You're gonna tell your friends it sucks not to play it anyway. You know, you're not really NDA's not really protecting anyone. You, you, no. you gotta be in a in a in a shippable state before you. You yeah, even start open it up to people because yeah. like, once you let people play it and they think the game sucks, it's like you said, they're just gonna tell everyone it sucks. So for some reason, it's this reminds me of Fear Three. Stupid. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know why. Did you see? Are you, are you looking at the video for it? The video is pretty cool. There's like music blasting in the background, and it gets you kind of pumped. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. The game looks. The game looks interesting. So have you guys heard of this? This looks interesting. Uh, speaking of upcoming games, Chronicle RuneScape Legends. It's like Hearthstone kind of. Are they, make, are they jumping the Hearthstone bandwagon too? Yeah, I'm surprised. This is what Jagex should be working on. I know they're trying to make like this, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, why not use their established franchise and just make a card game? I feel like that's that's the route everyone's going to end up going in. Like I said, you know, uh, Riot Games is working on a new game. And I think it's going to be a card game. Only because they have all the assets already. I mean, Hearthstone was a very logical move for the Warcraft team to start working on something like that. And there you go. Roots gives into it too. If you guys ever played a game... Uh, Pax Nora. Yes, I reviewed it. Okay, so if you watch this trailer for RuneScape Legends, uh, just based on the trailer, muted, it kind of reminds me of Hearthstone meets Pax Nora. Let's see. I think it's, it looks it's got like little figurines. You know, so it's not... Oh, I, I see what you're saying. It's like a tabletop-like. Yeah. 
Dragon Knight. What was it? Mage Knight. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mage Knight. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Interesting. A little bit different. I liked Poxnora. It it was too complicated, and I think a game like this needs to be like really slim and really quick launch. Also, with the too complicated, it's okay to be complicated and have extra depth. I mean, but if you're complicated, you're not going to get the same level of success as Hearthstone. I mean, I think Hearthstone's rocking it because it's so simple. But you can also be like Pox Nora and carve out a niche. I mean, that game's been around for a while. They have like 20 expansions or something by How now. How big can it be? Can't, I don't think it's that popular. What, Pox Nora? Yeah. Pox I didn't say it was that popular. I said Hearthstone is the big success. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can carve out a niche if you want to be more like hardcore, extra layer strategy, and that's okay. You don't have to be. You don't have to go for like a blockbuster, mega success either. You know, you can you can survive with a core player base. Hmm. This looks interesting. This game. This yeah, game I like it. Legends. I like it. Uh, it's not just a Hearthstone clone. They kind of mm -hmm. they kind of put their spin on it with the whole figurines. That's cool. I Hearthstone clone? How can how can anyone be a clone of Hearthstone? It's just a card game. They didn't invent the card game genre. Oh come on! If you look at the screenshot, they even like the cards like in the trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, like they kind of look. Look at it. It looks like a Hearthstone card. Like it. It does. It, it really. Yeah. Does. That's, so what, that's what I thought when I even thought. like the logo looks like a Hearthstone logo. Like if you see the if, right, on the that's banner. Pretty, that's pretty funny. That. <laughs> okay. See. So. Did you guys see that thing about um? Shoot, what was that card game called? And they got like sued by Wizards of the Coast. Hex, right? Oh, that's settled. Apparently, I'm not sure who yeah, won. Yeah, they got yeah. settled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can start advertising now. That's like that. that that's probably there. What was holding him back from trying to launch to a bigger audience? Hmm. Uh, Sean, well, not for a while. Sean, you've played that. What, yeah. How do you think it'll do? Now that that's that it's settled, they can start advertising uh, it. Uh, I don't know. Hearthstone is 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 a force to be reckoned with. Whoa, Sean. Yeah. As as the MMOs.com senior columnist on. So collectible card games, right? You, you something are something I never asked. For. You're you are a man of authority <laughs> right now, okay? As a as a industry analyst, where, how do you predict? I don't I don't predict it will do as well as it should. I think it was I had fun with it. It wasn't Magic the Gathering. Um, it had its own little spin, but I I think I don't know. I think people are going to be reluctant to give it a chance. But if you're listening, I highly recommend if you like card games, give it a try. It, it was fun. It's one of the more polished card games that's out there and it had a fun single player element which a lot of these card games lacks so I give All it right. a thumbs up but I I, I don't know I, I think they need a mobile they need to have a mobile app when it launches in order to be successful in this market which right. they don't have as of this moment going to uh, going to Shirelia our, our lead designer and uh, chief technology officer I'm going to make up titles for everyone now by the way <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, are, you, are you interested in trying out a game like Hex or you know because you, I know you like card games. Have you played I, I, it? I, I do like card games. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Aside from that news, I actually, um, I've only heard of it like mm -hmm. in passing. I haven't actually like looked at, the, looked at the mechanics and stuff. So I mean, maybe it's something I should check out so I could have a little bit more input there. All right. Uh, Hearthstone is I think gonna dominate the casual market, but there's still a lot of room in the in the CCG market for everything else. Do it's I not a, just about the casual. Do I do I gotta say? All right, all right. Go, okay. And going going to Erhan, our uh, our chief. Uh, can I be innovation officer? You can be chief innovation officer and chairman of the board. All right. Oh, the board. <laughs> Whoa. 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 It's a Whoa. board. It's a it's, it's a whiteboard. All right. It's, all right. it's a whiteboard. <laughs> Chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's my opinion. Ready? Hex. No chance. And Damn. here's one. So blunt. Here we go. Okay. No chance. Uh, this Chronicle RuneScape. Good chance. And here's why. This this genre will only succeed. If you base it on an established franchise, right? No one cares about your ogre mage card. They care about your, you know, like the 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 ma the ogre mage from WoW, or the monster or skeleton from RuneScape, or the hero from uh, League. You know. That's so, true. Yeah, if you just have generic, like if you try to make your own characters and stuff, you're gonna you're gonna fail. But if you base it on something, you got a good shot. You think so? That's my call. Right. I feel like I feel like a lot of games need to draw on their on the strength of their IPs more like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you have a really big smart. advantage if you build off of you know your established franchise. But we've already learned that that alone cannot carry a game. Like no, that, that, that's not that's not in, that's not enough. But it's a requirement. It's a requirement. That's yeah. A, I no, mean, for, for these casual genre games, like like if you're gonna good. copy Hearthstone, you better have uh, millions of players who are familiar with your brand to go out of their way and become like the, the advertisers. Because when they play, they're gonna tell it's, their friends. It's also a good way to steal players. Because if you played, what is it, RuneScape? You played that already, and then exactly, exactly. you're playing. You're playing here. You're, you're playing. Oh God, sorry. You're playing Hearthstone, and then you're like, oh, this new game came out, and I like that. I I played that game a lot. 
you're gonna switch, right? Because yeah. you want to see what you're familiar with in the game. Yeah. I'd say everyone who's played RuneScape or heard of RuneScape will at least try this. Now, they won't all stick, but they'll try it. How many people are actually going to try Hex? Like, even if it's a good game. Not way That's fewer. Yeah, yeah it, it won't get the attention it deserves for precisely that reason. But, but, I mean, but look at a game like this, for example. This is a mobile card game uh, I've only just recently heard about called Rage of Bahamut. All right? They advertise they have over 8 million players worldwide playing it. I mean, there's no IP behind this. I mean, I'm, is this even a Korean game? A they're saying 10 million in the picture. I mean, I say it's doing okay. Okay. It, 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 there's no brand behind this. Okay, when did this come out? Okay, look, it, it was easier uh, when the genre was newer. Okay, that's another thing. Also, this is mobile first, which Hearthstone wasn't, right? Yes, but now it's rocking on mobile. Okay, and, and what about this, uh, what about RuneScape Chronicle? Is that going to be mobile or desktop? Let's see what this news has to say. I think mean, there's a good amount of CCG-style games out there that are not necessarily built on a big franchise there. I mean, they're not, like, huge, like Hearthstone huge, but... Wasn't Mabinogi doing that, too? Yeah, they're getting yeah. in on that. Too bad that I don't feel that the Mabinogi IP is very strong, <laughs> personally. Let's see what else? What other card games can I possibly think of? I mean, obviously, the big games are going to rock it. Uh, Magic Duels, Magic the Gathering Online, are gonna, and Hearthstone are the are the three heavy hitters there. Uh, okay, so I was going to say, there's a land rush, right, uh, with the mobile games. Mm -hmm. So if you got in early, you're fine. You kind of establish yourself. Like... Well, I, that's why I think Angry Birds tried so hard to kind of make it themselves a brand. Like, they sold, like, T-shirts and toys and all this Made stupid a movie. stuff. Yeah. And the reason is they realize uh, eventually their Angry Birds game will die, right? So they want the brand to make, like, a card game, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, a tower defense game, whatever. They, 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 can reuse, they can reuse those characters later for a different game if they have to. But I think they're, they're, their plan eventually fizzled out because I think they're... A they're laying off people and things are slowing down a lot. For no, them. I mean it's 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 still mostly execution, but yeah, yeah. But I think the brand part is important, especially for these kind of casual light games, which are basically interchange almost interchangeable, like the card games. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. my that's my one cent. I mean, I, th I think the brand definitely helps. I don't think it's necessarily a requirement the way you said it was. I mean, if you I think if you come up with a solid game that does, you can you can create a brand by just creating a good game. I mean, League of Legends was not a brand. Like Dota was a brand because it's been around forever, you know. It had history, okay. and here comes League, and just literally eats up the entire nah, market. That's, with... games like that it's, are, are that's unicorns. Those because... are unicorns. First no, no, unicorn. it's it, it's different because Dota was not an actual thing; it was a mod. And yes, then but... League of Legends came out and turned that into an actual yeah, game. Hold I mean, on, so did hold on, so did Han, Millions but... of people played Dota Dota One. Okay. Millions of people still play Dota One. Yes. Yes, it wasn't a standalone game, but it had such a big audience. To the point where feel, people didn't that play matter? on Battle.net like, to play Dota. They I feel like own. League of Legends had the advantage. League of Legends had an opening. Had an opening. The, yeah. They had an opening, exactly. If Dota 2 came out like before League, I don't think it would have a chance. Uh, I think it definitely would have had a chance. It's still The same thing would have it, panned out. No. I, it it would have, but I think I think that's what contributes to the sudden like, explosive success of League of Legends. Is like, also, League is a real game, Dota is a real game. We're talking about card games here. Like casual, one hand on the mouse, one hand down your pants games. <laughs> okay, so let's not, wow. let's not mix the two, guys. Come on, right, come right, on, right. let's be real. I, I don't know about you, but the way I play League is one hand's out of my pants, sorry. <laughs> right. Depends uh, what hero I'm playing. I'm a champion. Yeah. Yeah, my DDR, my I'm DDR playing DDR. Annie, you know, you know, both <laughs> hands down my pants. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're playing with like a chin? You're like... Yeah, yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my hands have uh, other things to take care of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I looked up when Han came out of curiosity. Yeah, but League, League came out a little bit before... Uh, yeah, Han. yeah, but League why League. didn't why didn't Han like dominate? Because it came it, out. It, it, it Han was, was pretty, pretty big when it first came. It, it fizzled later yeah. after League and Dota Two came out, but it it was a pretty big game, Han. And it was pay to play. Don't Han. forget that it was pay to play versus yes. League free to play. That's a huge difference too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I and know, and by first, the man. way, Han didn't even innovate. They literally copied Dota. So yes, they I basically know. used the brand of Dota, right? Without mm -hmm. without. Saying so, but original original Dota I think was a brand. No, it was just Warcraft characters, but like with random like stuff thrown in, like um, Kimari from Final Fantasy X. Like yeah, <laughs> okay, but it, but it was out for how long? I like, did. It, it was such a big game even before League or Han were even announced. 
Okay, what, what's your what's your point? My point is you don't need to have you don't need to build off a big franchise because Dota. I mean, Lee came out of nowhere and dominated, and Dota essentially it, created its own brand out of it, nowhere it, too. It, no, if, if if Dota wasn't part of War Three, it wouldn't have been as big as it is because everyone already had War Three. Okay, three. It's yeah, like, yeah, as a platform. That's like yeah. it was a part okay. of Steam. So, so a brand is a platform. Like RuneScape is now a platform for them to make these stupid spin-off games. Just like Hearthstone is a spin-off of War, War, uh, World of Warcraft and War, War 3. Right? But being a brand and a, and a platform are not the same thing. Not the same, but I think I think basically... It, uh, obviously, it helps It's a launching pad. I'm only focused on the one point where you specifically said it's a requirement. It is for this... For, 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 card those, games for mobile card games... Going forward, I gave you a mobile card game that, that has no. <laughs> that if you want to compete with uh, Hearthstone today, you need okay. to have a brand. That's that's what I'm saying. All right. And okay. I could you be wrong. The most successful game in that in the genre versus and there's a lot of a lot of card games on mobile. I'm sure they're doing pretty well. Well, I think uh, you can't underestimate the power of a good game, creating its own brand eventually. I mean, Hearthstone is not going to be king of the castle forever, and just like. I don't think League will be king of the castle forever either. Then they'll, they'll, they'll be fundamentally different games on Hearthstone. If they're just like you just take turns oh, flopping yeah, creatures be, down, then you can't you can't beat it unless you have a brand. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what I'm saying. Got to be different. You have to innovate to beat it. Then. Yeah. You can't just if be. You, a, if you want to be clone. generic, you have to have an awesome brand and have good gameplay, and you not necessarily have to innovate. Oh, yeah. I think. All right. Well, I'll consider myself the victor. Ah. Uh, that discussion. <laughs> and we shall move I on. I want to award myself all the points. <laughs> I revoke your status as chairman. <laughs> I think you're both you're both the uh, losers in this one. Oh, you're wow. both dismissed. The real losers are, are our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, checked out, um, yeah. They can they can the decide they can games? they can decide who the winner is. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I'll I'll, I'll right, go with good. the comments. I'll go with the comments. The comments win. All right. I heard his brash statements on you need to have a. You guys are like a jury. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all right what's the what's enough. the verdict? <laughs> I look forward to your perspective. Mm -hmm. Just uh, heads up, if the jury does not agree with me, I, uh, I appeal, alright? <laughs> <laughs> no, no more uh, Losing Heart video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta, do another, I gotta do another video like uh, my Losing Heart one. Any, any, any games, do you guys suggest for which games I should troll? Ooh, troll, hmm. It has to be a game with a, 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 an emphasis on social elements, so I can like, do my uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I leave it to the audience again. Alright, if you guys have a good game for me to do my another Looking for Love style video, let me know. But the next biggest news this week, obviously, was the was Wildstar Reloaded. Have any guys played that yet? Nope. Nope. Not yet. Not I, interested in the Wildstar at all. Whoa. Uh, whoa. Shots at fired. <laughs> Salvo's launched. I played it in, in beta, and I was like, I was like so excited. Like, me, me and Django were so excited. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we're going to play this game. It's going to be like our new game. We got in it. We played it for like 10 minutes, and it was just like, yeah. 10 this minutes? Is, Come on. You got to get nope. one. Oh, man. Yeah, but that's that's important. The, the, yeah, the yeah, ten minutes yeah. is important, you know. And I was kind of like, okay. That's a quick judgment show. Right? So maybe the game changed, judgment. right? Because uh, oh, well, you played it uh, vaguely for at least ten minutes, so and what what I what I heard was that it kind of felt fluid and interesting. Like okay, I mean, uh, not interesting, but fluid. Fluid is very important. Okay, it the combat and savvy. movement felt very just like buttery smooth. Like you know, it just it seems like every game should have smooth gameplay, but they don't. The combat here is just. Very quick and it just feels very responsive. It's satisfying. This free to play, this free to play trailer has it's just cinematic. There's no gameplay. No, but the, 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 go ahead and look at the new free to play trailer. Does it, are you look at the new one? The Wild Star free to play trailer. The cinematic. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's it's again. There's no gameplay, but it's they launched with that new cinematic trailer to show off some of the the nice visuals, even though again just cinematics. I mean, if you compare it though to like other games I tried, like Guild Wars, like I played Guild Wars a lot before mm. I. I don't know. It just something about Wildstar was too samey compared to everything else. Well, we're gonna do a Sunday fun video for it eventually, so uh, we'll we'll get oh, our oh, revamped okay, opinions on it. All right. Give it a try. Everybody's gonna go with a clear mind. It, it right? does. No speaking of WoW clones, you know what it looks like to me? Uh, steampunk WoW. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. No, it's supposed to be more more sci-fi than necessarily steampunk. It's like ships and stuff. I mean, they're riding horses, right? And there's a cowboy in this trailer. Well, all right, there's, like there's, this, this guy on a horse is like outrunning this uh, guy on a motorcycle. You know those those uh those those horses are pretty quick, right? Yeah, that's not that's not a diss. I kind of I think steampunk's cool. It is really cool. Yeah. I like the genre too. I've never liked steampunk. Really? I thought I I took you for a steampunk guy. 
I know, and you're not the first one to say that. Maybe that's why I dislike Shut it. When I, when I look at you, the yeah. first thing I think of is steampunk guy. <laughs> really? Not sci-fi? I'm a little insulted. <laughs> no, you're not like, no, no, like, I, like, you are the steampunk guy. What? You might as well be holding like a wrench and like a freaking... No, no, he's got to be holding goggles. a wrench. Remember, yeah, they got the, the, on... the aviator goggles from like 1920s. You, you, you got... <laughs> yeah. I shat on Black Gold Online, so I don't oh, know what you're... That, well, that my steampunk love wouldn't have been able to save that game. That game was uh, pure duke, that's why. <laughs> no, I don't know. The only thing I liked from steampunk is Steam Boy. That was a pretty good movie, but for some reason, uh, the whole idea of steam tech kind of annoys me. Uh, really? I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. Right, you know, there used guys. to be a uh, steampunk MMORPG before Black Gold. Uh, it was called... Yeah, and it also sucked. It was called Neo Steam, and it was literally like another generic Korean grinder, but I played it for way longer than I should have, only because I liked... Steampunk so much at the time. Yeah. Did do you guys want to see a really cool like VR steampunk demo? Yeah. It's, this it looks, Why it looks not? like I was I was watching this. Have you guys heard of Ground Blue Fantasy? I have not. Nope. It's a mobile. Oh, I'm full mobile screen. Ch- ch- check Ooh. it out. I, 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 I like you the, on the, the cat lay on the left. I grab her ass. So if yeah. only we put spinning if only we put spinning oars on our ships, they would just fly. <laughs> why why can't he, why couldn't we figure this out? I've been thinking that. Jeff needs to figure it out. Can you imagine this though, like like in VR? Man, that'd be sick. Look at yeah. that jiggle. You know what I'd be watching if this was VR? That is. I would not be watching jiggle. the ship. You know, I'd be that watching these girls. Boobs work. <laughs> the, those boob physics are A plus. <laughs> the East. Oh, they can't they're get boobs jiggling. down. <laughs> She's saying Omer is really cute. By the way, I can translate. All right, she says, uh, let's see. She says, Omer's the cutest I'll guy ever. For you guys. The dress was not blown off. I wish I was him. She says, um... <laughs> he is so cool. <laughs> Anjin san. Anjin san. If you guys want to be good at this game, check out MMOs.com. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, there's a, there's a storm. I want to see their, their clothes fly off in the storm. The storm is an excuse to do more boob jiggles. This, this, right? is, this, this is unrealistic. This far up, it'd be really cold. They could not dress like this. Yo, you don't know that, all right? Their, the, their nipples the planet, will be frozen solid. It's, it's, magical, it's, on, it's different. Okay? It's oh. Magic. All right. Which of these ladies would you rather have? Right. Yeah. Right I, I, I red. Right I'm one. red all the way. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I think red wins this one as much as you know. She's like the friend. The other ones. Like that the potion's friend. way too big. Look at the potion <laughs> behind her. She needs a lot of mana. <laughs> she needs a lot of mana. All right? I, I, I can give her some mana if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Interesting video there. Wasn't that a cool VR? VR? Yeah, all, all Japanese comments. I find Japanese art. You know, I've noticed great. Japanese YouTube is like its own corner of the world. <laughs> it is. I, sometimes I end up here somehow, and like the, the I go from video to video, and I get the weirdest stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get the cockroach blowing contest? I get a lot of cat stuff. Yes, I've seen, yes. I've seen that. It was horrible. They, they put the cockroach in like a clear a tube, plastic so, tube, yeah. and then you have to blow it into the person's mouth. <laughs> Alright, Japanese have the most interesting uh, game shows for, for real, though. I'll give, I'll give them that. They got the game shows figured out. Huh. VR, guys. I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm pumped. I need it. I need it We're so pumped. bad. I mean, uh, uh, Q1 2016 is not that far off, so it's right around the corner. Time to save money. Yeah. Uh, does anyone know what the, the price point's going to be at on, on the call, Oculus? They said. 350? 350 or a little bit more. I think it'd be a little well, more than 350. That's a lot less. Really? I thought it was 350. Really? I thought that's what they said. I think that recently they came out saying it might be a little oh, more. Oh, okay. Because okay, they want to get everything in like. I got all They want to make sure you have a good experience, they said. I was looking at like 500, so. They say they want to focus on your good experience. If, if they really consider my good experience, I better include some uh, fine Japanese art in my uh, content. That, whatever. That's <laughs> a thing. You know, a lot, I think a lot of people don't have the computers to run it and they're going to try anyway and they're just going to be like yeah. buggy and laggy. Yeah. yeah, so it has, to, it has to run well on low end, like decently mid side, mid end computers. But like, even, I feel like people that are interested in VR have higher end computers. Think about yeah, it. I do you think like, uh, our computers right now are strong enough, or are we gonna need upgrades? Uh, mine. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, I apologize for the poor sound quality on my end. I'm actually in New Jersey, and uh, yeah, my my good graphics card, my good computer, and my good audio setup is all in Vegas. Yep. So, if you stuck with me till now, you probably don't need that warning, but. <laughs> 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 that should never make more sense at the beginning of the video. What were you saying, Yeshua? I think if you don't have a computer you bought within the last year, you need an upgrade for sure. Oh, damn. Like, and it, you, you have to buy a really high-end computer within a year if you want to say. And mine is, it doesn't meet the minimum requirements on a graphics card, but I have a 780 GTX, and people said that one runs okay. 
So yeah, it should be let's okay. See. Let me let me do the it. minimum suggested DX, uh, graphics uh, card is nine seventy. Yeah, I have a DX Nvidia Diaga. GeForce seven sixty. That is, that is not, not good enough. enough. Not enough. That is, not you cannot handle the fine Japanese. You, you need right? more pylons. Yeah, get more, get more <laughs> pylons. And supply it's it's un unpowered right now. <laughs> right, well, I before we wrap up, I do want to uh, talk about Dota two a little. You know, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys listening play the game, but uh, so uh, he's better. <laughs> in New York, I got to. I we got into the VIP uh, after party, so it was pretty cool to. You know, get did like you, pictures and pic shots with a. Uh, uh, there were some babes up there, at the, yeah, some cosplayers and stuff. Right. So yeah, we met. Uh, I met some YouTubers uh, and uh, Dota pros, basically. Good times. Any uh, any crazy stories? Uh, that's that's. That they're not, are, are they podcast uh, appropriate? Uh, or, well, or, or should we say for the late night podcast? <laughs> the late night podcast on the hidden. Ha, hente and uh, bar stories. Yes. <laughs> Uh, one, all right, here's an observation. Eternal Envy is uh, really like humble and nice, and uh, Puppy, he's got like a really confrontational kind of uh, attitude. He, but he, he might he might have been on tilt. He, he's he's in, he's like the he's the drafter or whatever for Team Secret, for Team Secret. Yeah, and they yeah, lost, he's... right? So maybe he's just on tilt. But yeah, he was kind of kind of mean ish. Well, I mean, he Aww. did just lose. Right? I mean, I might also have been drunk. Yeah, everyone everyone acts different when they're drunk. Some people are mellow, some people are like angry. You know? His team, his team did lose, and it was it, they got to the point where it was one one in the last game, like the best yeah, game, best yeah. of three. The last game determined it, like they were on the cusp of winning, and after they got kind of humiliated at TI five, so I mean that's you rough. Can't blame I wouldn't be happy either. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, I, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. It's, you know, it's a, it was a rough night for him. Yeah, I imagine. So that's Dota. <laughs> that was that was Dota. The world's going on for uh, for League of Legends. Oh, did that start? How, how, I group still don't see, get their system. Right it's like they have like regional things going on or constant games going on. How does that work? Well, I, I, you have to have different people qualify from numerous different regions. So, mm -hmm. and that, and then now they're they're setting up the early stuff. I mean, I'm not I'm not following this year's worlds either. I will watch uh, probably definitely the final, the last few days worth just for for the funds. And I'll probably bet on them too, just for fun. I was gonna bet on the the final match in Dota, and. I, I literally started watching the Twitch stream on Dota 2 as soon as the match already begun. So the, the, the cutoff was gone. I couldn't bet. Oh. Oh. And I was going to bet whoever the underdog was. <laughs> probably that Vega I, squad. And you probably would have made money. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to bet at least, I don't know, maybe a Bitcoin in there for fun. Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe maybe for Worlds I can pull off another like crazy parlay. <laughs> Get like another 75 to 1 parlay on. I'm going to try. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know what's crazy? One. How big Counter Strike Go has gotten. Yeah, isn't it? I'm always surprised by that too. I yeah. always forget just how big it is. I think it's gonna pass on Steam charts. Like, uh, here I'm showing it on the thing, my Bob. But uh, Game basically, it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I, I, it's gonna pass Dota too. I, I think believe. so too. Yeah, because think of, a game like I'm surprised it took this long for an FPS game to kind of pass MOBAs. You would think. FPS games have more general appeal than MOBAs. I feel like MOBAs mm -hmm. are more niche, whereas everyone can understand the FPS game, you know? Uh, but the one problem with uh, gun games, I guess you could call them, I think they're less female-friendly, because like, they don't want to shoot people as much. And in, in like MOBAs like League, you're not really shooting people. Wow, I like shooting people. Yeah. No, sh shoot, uh, shoot. Uh, average, shoot, average, shoot. average. <laughs> okay, right. It's kind of like an action <laughs> movie, right? Girls can enjoy action movies, but I think they're made for guys. Awesome, awesome. She was a little bit different in that regard, but she also falls into the pretty generic girl stereotype. She only plays female characters, all right? It's true. This all is right? true. We well, played... sometimes I have to play male characters. Yeah, we played Block characters. and Load last night, and she's like, oh my god, there's no, they're, they're all male characters. I want to play a girl character. Ooh, I got an What's idea. A girl thing to say. Counter Strike skins. You can make a female terrorist. You can be like a Chechen Black Widow. I would, I would, have a I would get that. <laughs> your, your armor is the burka. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> I don't think you're combat ready in a full burka, but no, we'll it's see. A, it's a Kevlar burka. <laughs> All right. Kevlar uh, burka, and uh, you have a clock instead of the bomb. Yeah, of course, the clock. <laughs> no, it's the clock. clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Uh, I, I do definitely think CS:GO is going to pass. And, and, and don't Dota. forget, Counter Strike is not free like Dota. It costs. Like, it still costs. Uh, I think I'm calling. It's gonna go free to play. 
it it will it will I'm it will. I'm surprised it hasn't. Yeah, no, already. actually, you want problems though for some reason? They're, Hackers. Yeah. They're always a problem in shooters, but not mobas. It's I'm true, not, it's I don't true. know why. Mm. The, yeah, that's the that's the main reason is that yeah. like tons of hackers and tons of Smurfs if you make it free, right? Smurfs it, like, no ruins... because it's ranked. But I mean, Smurfs okay. Ranked. Smurfs I mean, okay, hacks, but yeah. yeah, the hacks are not okay. No, because you don't you don't understand like in in Counter Strike like one dude that's a Smurf can like literally one v five your team. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So mm. it's like it, it compared to compared to MOBAs, it's like not as bad because you still have the laning phase, right? Mm. Where you can still have that victory, but in in Counter Strike, it's like literally like he will one really good dude can just walk in and just like one click everyone. Yeah, he's right. He's right. He's right. <laughs> so I, I think I played a game with Shu where there was a Smurf in our game and it just was unbelievably unfair. Like yeah, like, it was our ranked game and this guy just literally just he was like twenty seven and two. Like, he wasn't hacking either. He was just clearly Smurfing. Hmm. He was just better than we were. Okay, and it didn't matter. <laughs> it was one v five. He was just gonna one click us. I mean, you might think that, like, oh, you know, well, it's not too big of a problem. Get good, and he'll help you get good. But it's kind of like if you're a new player, that really, like, hurts the community as a whole. Because, like, if you're a new player, you're getting into this game, and then you just can't get, like, a, a fair feeling game, you're just not going to want to play. Yeah. Right? And, then the, and then the community is going to dwindle from that. So I feel like that's another thing that's keeping them. I mean, look at all the safeguards they already put to make it so you can't smurf. Mm -hmm. It's like you need to be, like, rank 3 or something to, like, mm -hmm. even play ranked. And that's, like, a pain in the ass, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I used to play ranked uh, go, but since they, now I can't. Even though I did before, if that makes sense. But yeah, because of the. Yeah, system. I can't either. Remember, we tried to play the other day. Yeah, I know, and we sold on Civ Five instead because we couldn't play on. Uh, we couldn't play CS Go. Dude, Civ Five is like number five on this chart. Yeah, Civ Five is surprisingly popular. Yeah. Dude, the game takes forever. Like, okay, last night we you were playing. You gotta turn animations off. Last night we were playing. We did. Right? We have them all off. <laughs> and Shu's turn always takes forever is the problem. My turn is done 10 seconds flat. Like 90% yeah. of the game is waiting for Shu's turn to end. <laughs> Sean, I was playing historic, uh, I was playing like historical like Boudica with chariot archers and I was um I was raiding all the towns and pillaging. I was just <laughs> so I, took forever. I had like two workers upgrading my town and not a single combat unit and just building <laughs> shit and then I didn't do I just we played for like three hours, I felt like we got nowhere. <laughs> that's a that's a traditional Civ game right there. That's why I love Civ. <laughs> Good game. Right, the worst part right. is, you know, the worst part about Civ though is, whenever yeah. you do win, especially if you're playing by yourself, it's never, it's never like a feel-good victory. It just ends. Like it, it never. The way civilization is, like, I, whenever I lose, it's like, oh, they researched spaceships and went to the moon, and now I just spent the last six hours playing this game. Dude, that's why you gotta turn off all those cultural it. victory nonsense. It's war, yeah, yeah, war, it's war, it's it's war or it. nothing. All right. I know. I know. Guys, 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 Maple Story got an update. All right, sneak this one in there. All right. Oh, we can't yeah. forget. We got the Maple Story Asylum content. It'd be trapped forever. Be trapped forever. Ever. Skip ahead a little bit. No, no, I'm not skipping ahead. This is awesome. <laughs> all right. There's a mummy laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I haven't played Maple Story in a while, so. It might, might give, me, give me a reason to jump back and so try something. Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> you know I've never played Maple Story ever. Oh, you missed it. Yeah. Okay, we got maybe we got this something fun video for new players on Maple Day. Story. Play Maple Story anytime. You know, this is more games. I'm telling you, more games need videos like this, like Terror that one with the with the male with the female fan service. Yeah, yeah just, I agree. Just silly videos like this, you know. He gets the word out there too. And as silly as some of these are, this makes me want to play uh, Maple Story again. Yeah, I like the, I like the platforming quest in Maple Story. I think like Guild Wars 2 has them as well. And we were talking little things in games besides the core gameplay, like the platforming stuff in Maple Story. I thought it was a lot of fun. No, even more than that, we were talking about like events. Yeah. Uh, every time I log on Maple Story, there's something going on, like these yeah. tokens, like seventh anniversary tokens, eighth anniversary tokens. Like these. I think we're like a tenth now. Yeah. And anyway, all all this random stuff drops for events, basically. And you can like, one was like you can pick a pop star or something every day. Like one of them wins. Uh, it, it just has cool events. Yeah, was on the ball with that. And you got big numbers in this game. People like big numbers, right? Love big numbers. See, you want to get like your numbers up there. Love big numbers. I'm still trying it out. Yeah, uh, sure. You don't even know how many times I went back to Maple Story, made a new character, right? All right, we, we got a, we got an extensive Sunday Fun Day list now. We got we got to narrow it down. So we got Wildstar, uh, Maple Story. Uh, what else? Rust again. Rust, Rust again. So we got we got to fix something. Uh, maybe we can do a we can do a two v two brawl hall later too. Oh, dude, yeah. Yo, Cause she and I've been playing a decent amount of brawl hall. We got like thirty wins under our belt, maybe more. Uh, so uh, I I get Gumble, the guy that hasn't played. 
<laughs> yeah, obviously. All right, all right, I'll make it work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's Brawlhalla, solid game. A plus, strongly recommend. All right, this trailer's getting a little long now. These people start around yeah, six it's, minutes. Yeah, they gotta. It's way too long. Just close it up. They gotta keep it down a notch. The, same level the top comment is the voice sounds like some guy from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we're coming towards our time limit here. Uh, so, right. any final... Uh, I, uh, one more thing, on, on, on this MapleStory video, like, the old MapleStory spends 5 years getting a character to 150. New MapleStory, you buy a level 150 character for, for $20. <laughs> <laughs> you can just buy a level 20, 150 character. <laughs> and what, a, what a difference. Alright, uh, that, that was it about MapleStory. <laughs> Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, but I think I think MapleStory would actually be a good game for Sunday Funny, because like within... I think yeah. we can get... Like you said, with the leveling now, we can actually get pretty high level pretty quick. And we can just do some, do some party quests together. I mean, yeah. cause there's a lot of this party quests I've never done. We just kind of skip over them now. The way the progression is set up, you don't have to do them. Mm -hmm. So we can try like a, mm -hmm. we, can, we, we can see how much we fail at, like, at one of those easy party quests, the puzzles. Is there <laughs> a list of uh, classes or do you, do you get started as a class? Or? There's, a, there's a billion classes in the middle story. Yeah. It's too many. Oh, man. Now there are. There's like categories of classes. It's weird. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to work with. All right, let's see this. Let's see if there's something. I got you. There's something on the most.com. Go to our MapleStory page. Boom, baby. I have a pretty good updated list of our classes. Uh, there you go. Oh, thank you. Those are those are the the gist of what's going on. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. Look and each this. of these classes have like uh, job advancements, all right? So. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, that's true. Right? These each have like multiple job advancements. So like, once a warrior gets like level thirty, you have like it branches off. Level sixty, it branches off, and stuff like that. So it's not just there's a lot of options. My favorite class is Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why it's a class. It, it, it evolves from the uh, BMW. The, the, the Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, where's that? <laughs> There's a class called Mercedes. Well, oh, there. Bowman Hero. Hero Bowman. Yeah, the Mercedes. <laughs> but Kaiser, an guys. S, S class. You know, too bad we never, never got to play the, the Pink Bean, all right? That was, that was the class. I know. You put out the video for it, too. The, the, the is it, page is it gone it. already? The pink, pink thing. It was for a short while. I'm not sure if it's gone. I, oh, I would yeah. imagine probably. It was a temporary thing. Yeah, it's gone. No, no, it goes away. It goes away tomorrow, guys. We can still sneak. That's it pretty in, funny. Right? <laughs> well, that's 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 pink bean. All right. Well, and that is the week. Uh, this time this was episode twenty. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just call it. All right, guys. Later, guys. See ya. Later. Peace.